Okay, so last week I went to Los Angeles, California, and I uh, went to play Destiny 2 on PlayStation 4 and PC. Uh, it was at a big uh, airplane uh, hangar deal uh, in central LA, and a whole bunch of people were there. Um, I, I got there in the night before, um, flew in from Arizona, got to the hotel, was told that my room wasn't ready, it was 10 o'clock at night, ended up getting some free drink vouchers, going to the bar. Uh, by about midnight, my room still wasn't ready, so I had to call Activision. They came over because they had booked out a bunch of rooms. Um, paid my own way to get there, but I still was using the group rate to save some money. Um, didn't get into my room till about one, close to one thirty that night, which was, um, you know, it was nice there was a bar, but I ended up drinking a little too much because drink vouchers, nowhere to be, uh, no room to go to. <laughs> Uh, you know, so it was a long day getting to LA. Um, Thursday I spent the day at the event playing the game. Friday I ended up having a bunch of plane delays. Another huge long day. So in a three day piece of traveling, it was just like one delay, either room or flight after another. So that was exciting. Um, that's partly why I haven't gotten much done since then. Uh, I was so exhausted from traveling that I didn't want to spend any time doing anything all weekend. But um, anyways, to the game itself. Uh, let's do that. Let's talk about Destiny 2. So like I said, I played the game on, uh, on PS4 and on PC. It and I and I sat through the you know the the reveal event that everyone watched streaming uh, online. Um, it was interesting because I I liked the reveal event quite a bit. I thought that they showed off a lot of things like matchmaking with guided games, clans, and all that. I thought that was a really great addition to Destiny Two. Uh, there's these new there's new worlds with adventures with very dynamic sort of. Uh, events that you can get involved with that sound a lot more exciting than the original game's patrols. Uh, there's there's the European Dead Zone, which is quite a lot larger than anything we saw in the first game. And there's some pretty cool new powers. Uh, so a lot of good stuff. So I was a little surprised at how negative a lot of the community's reaction was, or at least gamer reaction. I, I'm not sure if it's the Destiny community's reaction or if it's just the gamers writ large. There's a lot of negativity that I think is, you know, I wrote about this, I think it's a little ill-placed. Yeah, it would be great if there was classes, uh, new classes. Yes, I hope that we see some new alien species, or at least some radically different versions of the aliens we've seen. So there are some things that are disappointing. Uh, the lack of 60 frames per second on consoles. I can hardly blame Bungie for this. I really, I really think a lot of this boils down to consoles just still being not quite powerful enough. I mean, this is why you have 60 frames per second for Destiny on PC, but not on consoles. It's because even though we're in an era where there's, you know, PS4 Pro, these games are still being designed with the base models, like just the base PS4 and the base Xbox One in mind. And these are just not powerful enough to give us a steady 60 frames per second with all the stuff that goes on in a game like Destiny. And there's, you know, dozens, potentially dozens of enemies on screen, lots going on. Uh, so that's disappointing. Uh, more disappointing still, I would say, is lack of dedicated servers, which is something that's just honestly a no-brainer coming from Bungie and Activision. Bungie being, you know, a storied developer, Activision being a gigantic, huge, and very wealthy publisher. Uh, I feel like all of Activision's games should have dedicated servers. Uh, Activision Blizzard, um, across their whole lineup, they have eight billion dollar games in their portfolio right now these games should have dedicated servers both for stability for uh anti-cheat etc um so that's the, i think probably the most disappointing thing from the reveal in terms of gameplay honestly on ps4 the gameplay is so similar to the first game it's it's hard to give useful impressions if you've played destiny you know pretty much how destiny plays on ps4 the, the main difference is, is you know, how the menu systems work. I, I do like some of the changes made there. There's lots of little quality of life changes. 
uh, and how the new supers work. And then, of course, new guns like submachine guns and so forth. And, you know, these, these, these are things that you need a lot more than one day, you know, several play sessions to get a firm grip on. I like the changes. Uh, I like uh, the new weapon slot system, which puts special weapons all in one slot and then lets you tinker with how you put your primaries um, and then add elemental uh you know, elemental damage to one slot for the primaries. Uh, I think, I mean, I haven't made up my mind which way I like better because I've hardly played the new version. I'm going to have to sit with it for a while. I'm going to have to play with it for a while. But I do think it's a an understandable change, and I think it could be really good, especially in PvP. Um, really, it's where PC comes in that I think the most interesting thing I have to say would be, and that, that is that it really does work quite well. Uh the, the mouse and keyboard is absolutely the best way to play a first-person shooter. You know, I, I, I could give or take the, P, the mouse and keyboard for games that are action games, third-person games, things like that. Um, but for first-person shooters and for certain other genres like strategy games and whatnot, mouse and keyboard are so essential. Uh, I, I actually have gotten pretty decent on the, on the gamepad with Destiny over the years. Uh, I'm, I'm not bad. Uh, but I still feel kind of clumsy. You know, I just can't shake that feeling of clumsy. It's not as bad as like Overwatch on on console, which I just cannot even, I can't even play. But as soon as I was sitting there with my mouse and keyboard, I was suddenly like in the Crucible, and I'll talk about the Crucible mode I played in a second. But in the Crucible, I could I could actually kill people very easily. I could hit a lot uh, a lot better. I you know I was having you know in the match I played, which was with a number of Bungie or um, Vicarious Visions developers, number of staff, I'm not sure exactly where they all worked, but because Vicarious Visions is is working on the, the PC port. Um, there's actually several developers working on Destiny now, High Moon, Vicarious Visions, and Bungie. Uh, so there's it's kind of gotten a lot more complicated in that regard, but it's a good thing. It's good to have these support developers on, on board. But I was playing this, I, got this, I was second place in the match when I played the Crucible mode for the first time on PC. And I am usually not a second place in match kind of guy. I'm usually like mid range. You know, I'll have some. Sometimes I'll be at the top. Sometimes I'm at the bottom. I'm just really uneven when it comes to PvP uh, and Destiny. And it's, I, I can honestly say a lot of that is because I just cannot use a controller to save my life. Uh, I really prefer the mouse and keyboard. And I had a great match. And it felt great. Uh, I played the campaign also on PC. And again, it felt great. The one thing I'd say it's it's difficult to remember on the keyboard where all the mapping of different things is. I kept forgetting that super was F. I tried to do uh, melee with that and I accidentally set off my super. Um, so that takes some time. You can remap everything, but it does take some time to get used to. It's different. I heard from other people that it was uh, really disorienting and I don't feel like it was really disorienting. I don't feel like it was distracting to the point that it made it difficult to play but there was some you know in the, in the beginning it was there were some times where it's like I don't remember how to do this I don't I don't remember what I'm what I'm doing here and so it was a little difficult but you know I mean that goes that that as soon as you play it a little bit you're going to know it it's just it's just when you've got, have had this this control scheme burn into your brain for 3 years it's hard to adjust but the precision you get is so much better, and I know I talked with the uh, with David Shaw, the head of the the PC lead on the game, and you know he talked about all the ways that they that they're changing uh, the game to fit on PC, and it's a, kind of the struggle is making it feel like Destiny, but make it work for PC players. And he talked about how you know like the weight of the guns is different uh, in the in the P, in the console version, you've got more kick, you've got more weight, whereas that th you know that kind of feedback in a PC version throws off the mouse you know you're ch you end up chasing the mouse so in the PC version it's much more fluid and, and and it's easy to aim oh it's just so much better <laughs> I really like it uh, and it'll you know it runs at 60 frames per second or higher it's an uncapped frame rate there's uh, we weren't able to tinker with any of the settings because they didn't want people going and fiddling with all the settings at, a, at an event where people were cycling through these computers which is understandable. Uh, actually, on the PS4 version, you could con you could change the control settings uh, to different presets. And when I first got on the Crucible on the PS4, somebody had had inverted everything, like the outside of the defaults. So like the look and directional looks, they changed the button mapping so that jump wasn't on X. That was your super. 
I did this really weird control control scheme. So when I got in my first match, I, you know, I got right in there and I didn't even realize it at first. So I'm changing the trying to change how I'm looking around. Then I can't jump. I think the controller's busted until I figure that out. It was very it was a bad way to start my my crucible uh, experience on PS4. But anyways, I digress. On uh, on on the computer, there's lots of different graphics options. You know, pretty much it's a very you know it's not like just a port where there's like four different settings. You know, this is like a robust the settings list. You can change the anti-aliasing, the field of view, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's you know I didn't get to to change any of those things, but they're all there. So I think that PC gamers, hopefully, this doesn't come out too long after the main release. But I think that what we're going to see is a very robust, excellent port, honestly. And uh, that's where I'm going to be playing Destiny because it plays so much better with a mouse and keyboard in 60 frames per second. There's just no way that I'm going to be playing this game on console anymore now that I can play it on PC. It's wonderful. It really is. Um, the Crucible mode that we played was Countdown, and it's basically like a sort of version of Counter-Strike's main Defuse the Bomb mode. Uh you can revive your teammates, though. So basically, you've got four versus four. Uh, there's a very short clock. You have two different points you can set the charge. The other team has to defuse the charge. Uh, if everyone dies on one team, it's game over. Unless one team has set the charge and then they die. Then, they, then the other team still has to defuse the charge. So uh, then you play the first person to six. The first team to six wins. And um, I liked it. I, I don't think I would say that it... It gave me quite that same feeling I used to get when I played Counter-Strike a lot. Um, because it's more... You know, Counter-Strike is not a game with giant superpowers, you know, double, triple jumping, guardians. It's not sci-fi. It's more... Uh, it's kind of slower and more tense. This is still, you know, this is still Destiny. But it is Destiny meets Counter-Strike, and that's pretty cool. And again, it's better on the PC. So uh, overall, my feelings about Destiny 2 after playing the game was that I really liked it. Um, the, the strike I played, I only got to play on PS4. I just didn't have time to do it on PC, unfortunately. But the strike I thought was cool. The coolest thing about it was was also the, sort of the most frustrating is you got to this area where there's these big, it's a big like mine, and there's these big claw, like spinning claw things coming. And if they hit you, you die. So you have to like time it out. You're fighting the bad guys, jumping off to the side. The big spinny things come by. Then you go really fast. One of your teammates gets knocked down. You have to try to. You either have to let them respawn, or you have to run down there and get them, and and then risk getting killed yourself. Uh, overall, I mean, it's not the only strike that's going to be in the game, but I thought it was a pretty good one. Um, so overall, between the campaign, you know, the opening chapter, which everybody saw in the live stream. I played that. That was fine. It was pretty short. Uh, the strike, which I enjoyed, very it felt very similar to the first Destiny uh, and its strikes, but it you know had its own twist and it was cool. And then, <clears throat> and then the uh, the PvP. I thought it was a very enjoyable experience. I'm excited to play it, especially on PC. Obviously, I haven't mentioned that yet, but on PC, um, is it vastly different from the first game? No, no, not really. Uh, it feels like a sequel to me. Because I guess I just view sequels as not having to have a certain checklist of things. Like, it doesn't have to have new classes. I wish it did, but it doesn't have to. But it feels like a sequel. The graphics look great. They're, they're not vastly different, but they look fine. It runs great on PC. You're getting such a great frame rate. I think that makes a world of difference. Um, you know, we'll see what other kind of modes and maps we get in, in multiplayer. I mean, this is such a small slice of what the game is going to be. But I think one of the big differences going into this game is that, you know, when I first heard about Destiny, I thought it was going to be a completely different kind of game. You know, I thought it was going to be much more of a role-playing game, much more of a, an adventure game. You know, and it ended up being more of a grindy sort of, you know, hop into matches, team up with friends, go on strikes, almost like a... It ended up being it ended up being kind of a you know that game of service model became the the whole core of it and I thought it was going to be a different game so I was disappointed initially and then later kind of won over by the gameplay itself and the ability to sort of dive into small chunks of game and then and then dive out when I felt like it um, this game I come in expecting fully that it is going to be like the first game but with improvements and that's exactly what we're getting we're getting basically you know people say well this is what the first game should have been well yeah sure this is what the first game should have been obviously 
you know, that didn't happen. And Bungie's learned a lot of lessons. You can't really say, oh, Bungie should have learned all these lessons before they released the first game. This this is how it should have been. Fine. Like, that's useless criticism as far as I'm concerned. Yes, this is the game that the first game should have been. Uh, you know, it's we don't have PS3 or Xbox 360 holding it back. We don't have the engine that the original game was made with holding it back, which sounded like a nightmare to develop with. Uh, we, we have a more clear vision from Destiny, and we have lots of quality of life improvements like a map, like clans, etc. This is a much better framework to build a living game that can last a long time off of. Uh, I expect the content for this game to be much more frequently updated. Uh, for instance, uh, Activision CEO Eric Hirschberg, I sat down and talked with him a little bit. You know, there are going to be... High Moon and Vicarious Visions are going to be working on developing content for this game going forward, as well as Bungie and Bungie's live team. So we're going to have fewer droughts, hopefully. The idea is fewer content droughts, fewer waits between content updates, more fre frequent and fresh content. Uh, basically, in just so many ways, this feels like, yes, the destiny that should have been from the beginning, especially... You know, we pray that the, that the story is actually good this time around. Uh, but there is a lot of emphasis on the story, and I think that they have taken that criticism to heart. So I have I have optimism. Um, will this game be a, a game that players who didn't get into the first Destiny enjoy? Maybe I don't know. I think that it's I think that this type of game requires a certain kind of gamer. You have to like to. To some degree, you're going to have to like to grind. Even though there's a lot of changes that are supposed to make it less grindy, I think you still have to kind of like that cycle of getting better gear, or leveling up your character, getting better gear, leveling up your character, you know, going on patrols, going on adventures, going on doing these things, fighting certain numbers of rounds of this Crucible match and so forth. There is that cycle involved. Not everyone enjoys that. Some people just want to play a Halo campaign and then go to multiplayer. You know, some people just, you know, or Call of Duty or whatever. This game is sort of a hodgepodge of things. And I think that, like the first game, that's going to be some people that love that, some people that hate that. Uh, or some people like me who kind of have a love-hate thing with it. Um, and I think, but I'm hoping that a lot of the hate that I've felt towards the first game is gone in the second game. So, we'll see. Um, overall, I was pleased with what I played. I, I enjoyed it. The experience itself... Just so many people at this event. I don't know if you've noticed this about me, but I'm sort of a little antisocial, uh, curmudgeonly. I love people, but I don't love big groups of people. Um, unless it's a bar, you know? Even then sometimes. <sighs> but, uh, you know, they, they just... yeah. I, I was going to try to get footage, my own footage, but I couldn't get my own footage. So, you, you know, this is all B-roll footage you're watching. Because... The line to capture footage on the PS4 Strike was an hour long. I would have missed out on tons of other stuff. I wouldn't have even gotten to my interviews on time. Uh, to get onto the to capture footage for the PS4 Crucible, again, it it was just a a madhouse in there. And finally, that when a, when a non capture station opened up, I was like, I'll take it. I don't want to wait here anymore. Um, then uh, in the PS, the PS4 is the only way you, where you could get footage, and the campaign didn't even have capture stations. And I was told not to bring my own capture stuff, which I should have done because I could have hooked up to some non non capture stations. But that's my bad. Um, and then there was no capture on the P on the PC. So, uh, but I'm sure you've watched plenty of. If you're interested in footage, um, you've probably watched lots of YouTubers who are probably better at the game than me, anyways, playing it. So, go find them. Uh, I will I will have my own footage when I get the the review copy way later this summer. Although it's only a few months away now. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm sorry if I've just been so busy. I haven't made many many videos lately. Uh, for those of you who enjoy Dark Souls, I am doing a giveaway, which I will link to. I am giving away the board game, the Dark Souls board game, which is really cool. Uh, really cool game. Very difficult, very fun to play with some friends. Uh, just a terrific, just a terrific board game. Just just huge. Um, I think you'll like it. So all you have to do is go check out that video and follow the rules there. There are rules. 
Um, anyways, if you have any questions about Destiny 2, I'm sure I left some stuff out. So just hit me up in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter. Shoot me an email. I love you all. Peace. Guys, you've encountered a massive vex mine. Watch your back, friend. I'm detecting multiple ordnance types. You're not helping! to the floor. your feet.
not getting up from that. Zavala, we're good. Well done. Failsafe, what's your assessment of this incident? Vex records indicate the Cabal discovered the mine and dug into this world to capture it. Had the Red Legion achieved their goal, I estimate a 60% chance this planetoid would have been destroyed in the ensuing battles. Luckily, the captain stepped in. 